Hey guys. Today we're starting Unit 9, J1. If you need extra reinforcement, this is Section 6. Whoops. This is Section 6.1 in your book. We're going to learn about systems. We're going to learn how to solve them by graphing. And we're going to learn how to determine if a point is a solution to a system. Here we have a system, and the systems that we're going to be studying are all equations for now. And a system is just a set of equations. And in this system, we have two equations, and we'd like to figure out if 2, 4, the orders here, 2, 4, is a solution to the system. Now, in order to be a solution to a system, it's got to make this equation true and this equation true, and all the equations in the system true, in the system true. If 2, 4 is not a solution to any of these equations, then it's not a solution to the whole system. So let's check. I'm going to plug 2, 4 into my first equation. So this is my x value and this is my y value. And I'm going to get 2 minus 4 equals negative 2. And I've got to figure out whether that's true or false. So I'll just simplify. 2 minus 4 is negative 2 equals negative 2. And, oh, it's true. Yep, that, that one worked out. Okay, so this one, 2, 4 is a solution to this equation. That actually means that if I were to graph this line, 2, 4 is going to be on the line. That's what it means for it to be a solution. If 2, 4 is on this line, if I were to graph it, um, this will become 2 times 2 plus 4 equals 6. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 4 equals, uh-uh. No, that's not true. That's not true. So this 2, 4 is not a solution. Whoops, not a solution to that equation. So is 2, 4 a solution to the system? The answer is no. Let's see if 6, negative 2 is a solution to this system. I'm going to plug 6, negative 2 into each equation and see if it makes every single equation true. This is my x value and this is my y value. So my first equation is 2x minus y is 14. So let's plug it in. I've got 2 times 6 minus negative 2 equals 14. So this is 12. Oh, I'm going to leave and change that. Plus 2 equals 14. And 14 equals up. Oh, works out. Okay, happy. So this one is true. I know that 6, negative 2 is on this line if I were to have graphed it. It is a solution. Let's try it in our other equation. x plus 4, y equals negative 2. Plus 6 plus 4 times negative 2 equals negative 2. So that's 6 plus negative 8 equals negative 2. And then, oh, negative 2 equals negative 2. All right, this one checks out also. Good. So this one is true. If they're all true, then that point is a solution to the system. It works for every equation. So is it a solution to the system? The answer is yes. Now what we actually were do what a solution to a system is, is it's the one point that is on both lines. So we know that we can actually graph these equations, we can graph these lines, and that's what we're going to do next. We're going to actually graph both lines, and we're going to see where they intersect. And where they intersect, that's going to be the solution. So we've graphed the first one for you. The first line is y equals 3x minus 5 in slope-intercept form. So I'll start at 5. And I'll go up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. And you can see that this is the, the line for y equals 3x minus 5. So now let's try to graph y equals x minus 3. So for this one, my slope is 1 and my y-intercept is negative 3. So I'm going to start on negative 3. I'll do that one blue. Negative 3. 
three, and I will go up one over one, up one over one, up one over one. And I think you can see the line, but it's right. Right there, that will be my line. And can you see the point that they intersect? Right there. The ordered pair that represents that point is 1, negative 2. And I think that's the solution. That's where they intersect, but I'm going to check this to make sure. So let me plug it in. This is my x value, this is my y value, and I get negative 2 equals. 3 times 1 minus 5. Negative 2 equals 3 minus 5. Is that correct? Yes, it is. That checks out. So it checks out for my first equation. Check my second equation. Negative 2 equals 1 minus 3. Negative 2 equals negative 2. Yeah, that checks out for my second equation. This is the solution. My solution is 1, negative 2. It's the place where these lines intersect. Let's try this one. y equals x plus 7, and y equals negative 2x minus 2. Graph the first line, where my y intersects 7. And my slope is 1, up 1 over 1. I'm going to have you graph the second equation. See where they intersect. Figure out what the solution is. And then try, plug that point in to both and make sure that it makes both of them true. Pause me and complete this problem. Tom currently has five comic books in his collection, and he's subscribed to receive five new comic books each month. His uncle has 145 comic books, but he sends five to each of his three nieces each month. How many months will they have the same number of comic books, and how many books will that be? Well, we can tell that we have two people. We have Tom and we have his uncle, and each of them um, will be represented by a different equation because each of them are collecting at different rates or have different starting points. So let's see if we can write those. So Tom currently has five comic books, and he's going to receive five comic books each month. So I know that this is my starting point, my y-intercept. My y-intercept is five. And he's receiving them. Do you see a, a ratio here? He's getting five books each month. Found my ratio. My ratio is my slope. It's the ratio. So I know that my slope is five books per month. Okay. Remember, my slope is my y variable over my x variable. So books is my y variable, and month is my x variable, my independent variable. So I can write this equation as y equals. My slope is 5, 5x plus, and my y-intercept is 5, 5x plus 5 for Tom. Now his uncle has 145 comic books, and then he sends 5 to each of his three nieces every month. So his starting point is going to be 145, his y-intercept. But he sends five to each of his three nieces every month. So he's going to send how many books per month? Fifteen. So this is my ratio. And you can't really see the word books there, but I know that you can you know that it's books, okay? So my ratio is going to be, let's see, he's oh he's getting rid of fifteen books per month. So he's losing fifteen books per month. So my equation is going to be y equals, my slope is negative 15, mm. negative 15x plus, what's my starting point? 145. All right, let's graph this and see. So I'm going to start 
at 145 for the uncle since I've got my blue pen out. And after my first month, it's going to go down by 15. My slope is negative 15. It's going to take me down to 130. For the second month, it'll take me down to 115. And after the third month, it'll take me down to 100. And I can basically see this line. Let's see if I can graph that line. You graph the line as well. You do a good job of doing it, okay? Now, um, I'm going to graph Tom. He's starting, oh, he's starting at 5, way down here. He's going to go up 5 for every month. my point of intersection. I'm actually going to follow this down to make sure I've got the right points there. Down 3 over 1, down 3 over 1. Yeah. Okay. Do, we see do we see where the lines intersect? So they're going to intersect at 7, 40. Ooh, 7, 40. Can I write that down? Now the 7 is my independent variable. That's the number of months. This is the number of books, number of books. So how many months will they have the same number? In how many months will they have the same number of common books? In seven months. How many books will that be? Forty books. And we can plug in those values, and I suggest that you try that with a calculator. Plug in seven and forty and see what you get. Actually, we'll do it together because it's fun. So this will be 40, and this will be 7. So 40 equals 35 plus 5. Oh, yeah, that one worked out. Now let's try this one. Um, 40 here. And I will put 7 here. Let's see. So 40 equals negative 105. Negative 105 plus 145. That's two. 40 equals 40. Yeah, that one checks out also. So I know this is the correct solution. Okay. See if you can figure out if 1, 9 is a solution to the system. Pause me. Is 2, negative 3 a solution to the system? And I'll see you in class.